Hey everybody. <clears throat> Let me get this lighting set up better. Okay. Boy, my hair looks dark. <laughs> it's really not that dark. Um, okay. So today I want to share with you some stuff that the Lord said to me that was really exciting this morning when I woke up. Uh, actually, what happened was Last night, I like to get up after my husband goes to bed. If I, if I can't sleep after my husband goes to bed, I like to get up and sit out here in front of the fireplace on my swinging chair or on my rocking chair. And I like to just get into the Word and study something. So last night, I was sitting out there, sitting out late and looking at the Bible and studying something. And when I do that and go to bed, God always talks to me because he's a chatterbox. So this morning, when I'm just getting awake, is usually when God talks to me, gives me a book, gives me directions, gives me some revelation. And this morning, he said to me, which has nothing to do with what I'm going to teach, but he said to me this morning that light and sound frequencies heal the body. So I just wanted to share that with you real quick. But what I really want to share, what the Lord talked to me about this morning is how... We took the word God and put it, um, we took the word God and we took it and made it like this is something we should worship instead of what, what, what God really means besides worthy of worship is um, he supplies. If somebody is your God, it is the person or the thing that supplies everything that you need that has all the answers to everything that you need. And God says that we often look at him and worship him, but we don't look at him at, as our source for everything. And he went over this really cool list that got me all excited that I wanted to share with you this morning of everything. And he gave me the scriptures. You're going to have to look them up. I didn't have time to look them up. I got to go skating this morning. That's my exercise program. But... I didn't have time to look him up, but he showed me how he provided for more than we're even thinking and asking for. So this is basically the list. He says he supplies all of our food. And we think we have to work and get money and turn in the money and then get food. But he said he supplies all our food. And he supplies our food from heaven's source. If you look at, in the Old Testament, he took me back to uh, where he supplied the manna to uh, the people when they were out in the middle of the desert and there was no food. He also talked, showed me how the ravens bought uh, food to um, the prophet. So he, so he supplies all our food. Then he supplies water. He got water out of the rock, and the rock is a representative of Jesus. And so he provided food, he provided food and water. Now, everything he provided in the Old and New Testament is available to you today. And so he provides water. So whether you need a well, whether you need a pond, whether you're in the desert at the moment and you need water, he provides water. He, provided, he provides clothing. And when the Israelites were in the leaving and going out in the desert, for 40 years there was no shopping malls there. He provided clothing for them. He provided shoes for them. They did not outgrow the clothing or outgrow the food. And I thought that was really cool because we don't, we look at the Old Testament like, oh, that's the Old Testament, but it has so much value and so much richness in it. So we can expect this today. We can expect him to pro provide our food, our water, our clothing, our shoes. He provides air conditioning. Isn't that awesome? Think about that. He provides air conditioning. There was a cloud at night, uh, I mean in the daytime, that shaded them and keep, kept them cool and also separated them from their enemies. So... When I look at the clouds and I see the hosts of heaven looking down at me, I'm not imagining things. Besides that, our imagination is the bridge and the connection to heaven. It was given to us to connect to the spirit realm, which we are spirit beings. So, <coughs> excuse me. So, um, he provides air conditioning. He provides a barrier from your enemies. He provided heat. Got hair in my mouth. He provided heat. At night when it was cold, he had the fire, and the fire provided heat and light more than they needed it. So he provides your air conditioning. He provides your heating. He provides light. When the ten plagues were happening, they were actually, those ten plagues were actually 
um, judgments against the false gods that that part of the country worshipped. And I never saw that before. I saw that last night. God showed that to me last night. And I never realized that, that all those ten plagues were representatives of gods that people worshipped at that time. So think about some of our sicknesses and diseases and stuff that's happening now. Could those be um, their consequences of the false gods that they're worshipping? Because um, they reap, you reap what you sow. Anyway, so I thought that stuff was really cool. Now, not only does he supply that stuff, he supplies skill, talent, and talent. In the Old Covenant, he told <coughs> Moses, who never, I mean, um, Noah, who never built a boat, didn't even see rain, he gave him the skill and the plan and the blueprint on how to create a boat. Not only that, he took people uh, that created the tabernacle and he gave them skill and talent. Not just skill, know-how, but talent on how to do something. And I'm expecting that for hockey, excuse me, because that's something I do and I also publish books. So he gave them skill and talent. So if there's something you want to learn to do, you can you can access that skill and talent and, and all this stuff I'm naming. He gave them prosperity. Everything that they set their hands to do prospers. The blessing of Abraham are, is, is prosperity in every area of your life. You can access that. But here's another thing. He gave them land. Okay, so if you want land, <coughs> he gave land to his people. We're his people. We have a better covenant. He gave success to them. He gave supernatural strength. If you look at Samson uh, and his hair, he gave supernatural strength. So if you need strength in something that you do, he gives you strength. Now he put into us joy. Joy comes from wine. Okay, At the wedding, he changed the water into wine. And, hey, I'm sorry, but it was drunk alcohol wine. It was not dirty dishwater turned into uh, grape juice. Okay, it was not grape juice. It was alcoholic. It was wine, but it was from heaven. It was heavenly wine. Okay, the wine on earth is a copy of heaven wine and is good to create joy. It's not to create you to do stupid stuff and hurt people. Wine was created by God to be good, to be medicine, and to medicine is joy, and oh, I just got that connection, I just got that, a merry heart doeth good like medicine, and joy is laughter, and it's like a medicine, so put that together, so heavenly wine, so when you get drunk in the spirit, you are getting healing, you are getting medicine, so that is so cool, so he gave us peace, uh, peace beyond understanding, and that's really cool because I've had animals die and when they die if I say I take authority over a spirit of uh, sorrow and grief instantly that emotion of sorrow grief and pain stops of course I miss the animal but the feeling stops uh, because Satan always uses a feeling an emotion connected to a past event to an event to cause it to be a trigger for you to respond and react the same way with with an event or something your trauma you're going through right now it takes something similar that happened in the past and says oh, there it is it's gonna happen again and you're programmed you go through seasons and cycles and that's another thing we are no longer oh, that's a whole new video we are no longer under the cycles and seasons of the death and the curse that's all over the earth but uh, let me let me go on here so he also gives us health and wholeness, and that's available to us to take it in the Word. Then he goes, <coughs> he renews our youth. That one's really exciting, because I'm 61 years old, and for two years now, I've been playing men's league hockey, and I absolutely love it. I love ice skating. I ice skated when I was a kid. Till the year, I was 16, I'd go every day after school to the, uh, walk across the, the field to a pond and play ice hockey. I didn't even know how to stop. I had figure skates and we had stick, wooden sticks and I had a clue, no clue what I was doing. But I, I always went to, since the time I was 13 and gave my heart to the Lord laying out on my hill looking up at the stars. No wonder God shows me stars that dance and praise the Lord with me and 
the, the clouds that host in the sky because that's what always drew me to him was the clouds and the stars at night I'd lay in. I, I'd watch that stuff. So, <coughs> um, I don't even know where I was going with that. Anyway, um, renews our youth, okay, and play hockey. I don't know where I was going. Anyway, Sarah was so old she couldn't bear children, but God renewed her youth so that she could bear children. That is available to us. I don't, I don't want my youth renewed in the sense of having children, but I want to look a whole lot younger. And as I, you know, like play hockey and stuff, I do that kind of stuff now at this age. I didn't do any hockey or any ice skating between the time I was 16 years old till two years ago. And now I'm on a hockey team with my husband and son. So I believe my youth has been, been renewed and is continuing to be renewed. But at the end of this video, I want to share something with you that I thought was really exciting about communion. Uh, if you look at Psalms 92, 12, and 15, that's the only scripture I actually looked up. There are a lot of scriptures that, that go with all this, and I'll probably... Uh, make a post and put all the scriptures up for you but after I'm done with this I'm going to go skating which is my stress relief and my uh, gym basically my exercise so I'm going to keep this short he gives us power authority and dominion over death okay now that I should write this down because I want to talk about that real quick about the cycles and the seasons Okay, I'm going to draw you a quick picture. This is what God showed me. Okay, God showed me this. He said, imagine there's two lines here. This is like a chart, okay? This is, this is time. These two lines are time. And this is us, and this is God. God's outside of time. Now, when we became born again, we are now outside of time. Because everything God did for us is ours now. By the stripes of Jesus, we have been healed. We have been born again when we accept Jesus. It's, it's, a, it's already a done deal. It's all done. So these are the, these are times. This is time. Now, on earth, this is time. And what God showed me is that the cycles and seasons on earth are in time. In other words... He created the moon, the star, and the suns to create time on earth. Okay, now when man fell, when men fell, everything that was under our authority and dominion fell also. So that meant the plant life, the kingdom, uh, the animal kingdom. That meant seasons and times and cycles, aging and all that. All, all that came in here. Everything on the earth is now under uh, the cycle and time bound in, in boxed in to time boxed into time this is everything fell that was under our authority plants animals seasons everything our thinking our brain our, our consciousness everything so when we get born again we're outside of time we can travel back and forth in in this so what that means is that everything that we put into our body everything we breathe eat see taste feel smell and have knowledge of is all inside this box which is which has fallen okay this is what authority and dominion was underneath us okay now it's in the box of time everything has fallen that's why you have weeds that's why you have animals that now are a danger to us, that are poisonous to us. That's why you have um, things that die. We die. Animals die. That's why no matter what vitamins and minerals and nutrition you take, they're still under in this box of time and the fallen and the curse. But we've been redeemed from the curse. And if we understand that we've been redeemed from the curse, we bring every thought captive that keeps us in this box of time, cycles, and seasons of the fallen world, fallen food. Uh, no, you, we can eat chicken, and that chicken died to give us its life, to give its nu us nutrition. It's still not going to give us all the nutrition that we need because it's fallen. So if you can get that, it's all fallen, and step outside of this. Now, this is one thing I want to show you. This is the thing that I wanted to really show you here is communion is the only 
thing on this earth that can give us life that is not that is not inside this box of time of the fallen earth so god said to me oh, this is so cool god said to me this morning that communion is superfood you know how you eat a super smoothie superfood smoothie and you buy bone broth and you buy this and you buy that well and, and you, you you drink it with all the mushrooms the fruits the vegetables and all that stuff and it's a super smoothie because it's got all the health and nutrition in it well that's sort of fake because that can only take us so far but when we take communion we are eating the ultimate super food isn't that so cool I just love that and we are stepping we are putting into our physical body something that's not on earth trapped in the zone of time that is fallen we are going outside of time when we take communion we are going outside of time with our our physical body is now being fed symbol the symbol of the body and the blood of jesus which is promising us life and is but it's life from heaven so communion connects us to heaven and something else God said to me that was really exciting last night. He said, fasting. Ugh, my pen doesn't work. Okay, there. He said, fasting takes us where our body is no longer, we're no longer being led by our body. But when we fast, we are bringing our body under the control of our spirit. And it opens us up to hear it also takes us out of the box of time and it opens up us up to hear what God is saying so fasting he says this kind goes out not uh, by, by by prayer and fasting well technically we found out that when we fast our body heals itself our mind gets rid of toxics and we can hear better <clears throat> we can hear from God better and it says that um, fasting loses bondages oh, I should just look it up in the scripture here and see if I can find it it was um, I think it's Isaiah hang on sorry I should have God takes me gets me crazy sometimes on this stuff here um, okay here it is fasting I used to hate fasting and now I know how valuable it is because I'm writing a book on communion and God just brought fasting into it it loosens bonds of wickedness. It undoes heavy burdens and lets the oppressed go free. Okay, it gives you light, healing, righteousness, because you are righteousness in God. And you hear and it strengthens your bones and you are like a spring. So if your ministry is not working, if, um, if you feel like you're in bondage, that you have burdens, that you're oppressed, try learning about fasting. And <laughs> it's, it's just... Fasting is so powerful. Fast and then take communion. Fast and take communion. Intermittent fasting is really amazing. It just like makes you feel lighter because uh, it just does everything that God says it's doing. So combine that with um, communion. But anyway, this here is this here is really really exciting. So I think I want to finish up with uh, saying um, one of the things that happens when you take communion or one of the things that God has provided for us is we can hear his voice. It's not, listen to this, we don't get little impressions. All these times when I was in church, I've been saved since I've been 35-ish and I'm 61 now. So <coughs> something like that. I've been, no, I've been saved since, I've been saved at least 35 years. And I was always, always, always hungry. And I always got in trouble from pastors because they never would feed me. I'd go home and study myself. And I go home and I get people healed and they get mad at me and get people delivered and they get mad at me. And anyway, so I always heard in church that God says stuff in little impressions. Uh-uh. That's not what the word says. The word does not say that you see God in little impressions. It says that we hear 
his voice. We hear his voice. We hear complete sentences. We hear whole paragraphs. How do you think I write my books? I study the word. I think about the word. I meditate on the word. And I hear his voice. I mean, I've written 55 books or something like that. It is time spent with God. And the more you study it, you could just take, you could give me one sentence that I'm interested in it. Oh man, I can write a whole book about it. It's amazing. Uh, because we hear his voice. Okay, don't settle for getting just an impression. Say, God, <coughs> I'm your sheep. I hear your voice. I hear your voice in my head or out loud. Most likely in my head, I hear your voice. Whole sentences, not just pieces. So expect more. The other thing is we have fellowship with him. God is not happy that we see him up here as this oh almighty god Ooh, be fearful he created us to have fellowship he wants us to have fellowship with him that means he talks i talk he talks i talk i go to the movie he goes with me we talk about the movie we laugh together i go ice skating i play hockey he goes ice skating with me he plays hockey with me he tells me and directs me and helps me sometimes if i'm listening so it's fellowship it's two-way street it's two ways it's not here's God up here woo, you know you yes we honor and we respect and we worship him but we have fellowship with him okay and here's the other thing he gives us servants okay now the ministering spirits are basically servants they're <coughs> they're there to minister to us as we they hearken to the voice of the word okay so if the word of God says that everything I set my hands to do prospers, then I can say, angels, everything I set my hands to do prospers today. So I send you out to get those Christian authors that write supernatural books that need them to get out today, to bring them to me that I can publish a book, give them the finances to publish a book, give me the wisdom, knowledge, discernment to do a good job, to get their book published fast and to get it professional and to do a good job and ministering spirits go cause my hand to prosper in this thing okay so we also have those ministering spirits which are like servants in servants in the sense that they hearken to the voice of the word there we, we can have fellowship with them we have fellowship we have fellowship with the cloud of witnesses now this is something that freaked me out for a long time I thought hmm that's that's new age that's not right but God showed me who do you think when Jesus was on the on the mound of, of uh, when he transformed and Moses and Elijah or whoever the two people were there they were the cloud of witnesses and he was interacting with them okay why do you think the word witness because they are there watching they are witnessing okay and a witness testifies a witness has knowledge of and relationship with the person they're witnessing okay so um so we have fellowship with the ministering spirits, with the cloud of witnesses. We are we are one body. <coughs> we are you are one with Christ. You are flesh of his flesh and bone of his bone. That's pretty exciting. You have the mind of Christ and you have you are one spirit with Christ. So I mean that pretty much makes us, you know, we're like Siamese twins. Okay? We have one mind, one body, one spirit, okay? That's pretty cool. So anyway, go over this, share this with your friends. Here comes my commercial. If you are an author, right now I have a special on for $300 instead of $399 until Christmas. If, uh, but you know, you can't have your book way out here. If your book is ready to be published within the next month or so, and you're ready to hand it over to me to format and everything, um, <coughs> for three hundred fifty, uh, three hundred $300 instead of three ninety nine. excuse me, I will format it, get your ISBN number, open all accounts, um, create a professional book cover, format it for you as a Kindle book and as a, oh, look, I got sparklies on me. Cool. Uh, as a Kindle book and as a, um, print book and publish it for you. So, um, that's only $300 instead of $399. Now, if Kindle does it for you, it's over $1,000. If other professional publishers 
do it for you. It's over $2,000. So what I am doing it at this price because I hear his voice. And at this time, this is the price he told me to do it as. And now I am accepting picture books. Not picture books that um, bleed, have bleed. Okay. I have two books. So this is my one of my books. And you see how I have pictures that don't come over to the other page. This book... Uh, this book has full-size pictures. This is okay, too. But if this picture started to come over to this book, over to that page, I don't do that because I'm not, I haven't really learned. I've done one book like that, and it was a real headache and really, really hard. And I don't have enough experience to charge somebody to do that. But I do, I will accept, you know, picture books. $300, I tell you, that's pretty cheap um, to, to publish your book and to format it and get it all ready. So... I'm ready to go skating, so share this with your social media sites, with your friends and your groups and so on. Let people know about this video, and if it's been a blessing to you, like it, comment on it, or whatever. If you want to say something to me, you have to mention my name, because this goes around to all thousands of people sometimes, and, and it kind of gets lost, and so if you say something to me, I'm, I might not ever get it unless you mention my name. <coughs> my website is robinbremer.net. Check it out and look at my videos. And if you're in Tulsa area and you need a ventriloquist, a comic ventriloquist, that's me. I'm Rockin' Robin. Comic ventriloquist, 24 years experience on stage, performing for adults and kids, churches, community outreaches, um, occasion Bible schools, and libraries, and not yet schools again because the program I'm working on, anti-bullying program, I mentioned, uh, I'm working on um, isn't ready yet and I have to kind of take God out of it and use the same principles for schools, so, unless it's a Christian school. Okay, so, robinbremer.net, if you have a book you want to publish, share this video. Love you. I'm going to go skating now. Talk to y'all later. Bye.